Now, when I returned to office for the second time in 1989, a young community trained police officer, Joe Ballas, sent me a note. And that note was handwritten. And frankly, I was a little astonished that such a young officer with all the hierarchy in city government had the audacity to write to the mayor and complain about his situation. I have a habit when I, in those days, got handwritten or paper letters, I would keep them on the desk until I had an answer. And most of the time, everything went out immediately. This handwritten note sat on the desk for three months. And finally, I figured it out. The problem was that we didn't have any teammates. There was no one there for him to work to build something. And so, if the idea of community policing worked for the Madison Police Department, why didn't the idea work for other city agencies? So we gathered together, and it took us six months to get organized, and we set up the neighborhood resource teams and created their mission, a mission which you see up on the screen here, but it's key as we develop that mission that they were going to work through the five component parts which we discovered were essential, absolutely essential, to building a complete community. And I want to mention as we get into health, that includes mental health and it includes trauma, whether it's hunger or any form of abuse. And that quality child care is not child care. It is quality. Now, do we have any of the graduate students left here? A few hands. I hope some of you know what I'm referring to here about structure, craft, and culture. And I'm going to come back to that at the end of the presentation. But keep in mind, those are the three critical elements in an organization. And usually, we focus on structure. And usually, I identify the major problems as cultural. But in this instance, it was a structural challenge. We recognized that, and we set out to identify the goals for the teams develop relationships among the city staff, neighborhood residents, and other stakeholders. Who are those other stakeholders? They may be business owners. They may be landlords. They may be nonprofits that work in the, in the area. It could also be the faith-based community. It could be people just passing through. But in any case, it was developing those relationships. We went on to understand the history and the nature of the neighborhood. And we had to highlight the issues that cut across the, the multiple NRT focus areas to address systematic barriers. Now, this is what a typical team might look like. It would include a building inspector, a civil rights uh, employee, someone from community development, economic development, and so on. You notice we have two team leaders there. Those two team leaders could be arbitrary. This particular team, it was someone from civil rights and someone from planning. And then we sort of infiltrated the teams with other support people. They weren't as extensive or core to the team, but they were part of it. From the attorney's office, the clerk's office, voting, engineering, finance, streets, IT, and transportation. Now, those two team leaders from each neighborhood resource team became part of the guidance team. And the guidance team would meet more frequent, excuse me, less frequently, usually once every quarter, bringing together information from the various neighborhoods. And they, of course, work with the person in my office now who is the NRT coordinator. I want to emphasize the word resource. These people are not leaders. Now, here's the present areas that we've identified in the city of Madison where we've got NRTs. They are the salmon-colored areas. There's nine of them. And as we go on to the next slide, you'll see those salmon areas, but you'll also see some stars. The red stars are neighborhoods from the 1990s that used to have NRTs and no longer do. The three green stars represent areas where we had NRTs in the 1990s and still do today. The salmon-colored areas are the present NRTs along with the green stars. What's important to understand 
is that Madison's population has been growing significantly over the last 20 years with growth uh, from African American, Hispanic Latinos, and Asians moving into the community and in proportional numbers, which unfortunately represent extreme levels of poverty. So what has happened, for example, in the 1990s, the African American population increased by about 30, 35%. The uh, uh, African American population increased in the next decade by 40%. And the uh, Hispanic and Latino populations have increased even more. During that comparable period of time, households in poverty, below the poverty level, represented by kids in our school district, increased from 22% in 1989 to today over 50%. This is an opportunity for us. It is a challenge, but it is an opportunity. Now, Part of our approach to dealing with the issues is placemaking. It is focused on what Fred Kent refers to. I can't read this. It's something about uh, turning everything upside down to get it right side up, right? And Fred has had a profound influence along with, with uh, Mr. White, who passed away a number of years ago, in approaching how you develop space to make it habitable. So. Here's some of the things that happen when an NRT goes into a neighborhood and works with the community. Now, some of this is not direct, but it came years later. Now, this is just a uh, entranceway to the Troy Community Gardens. And I mean, how much fun is that? When you bring people together, you eat. Food is a common denominator. When we designed our convention center, how many of you come from cities that are convention, have convention centers? Well, we're better than you. <laughs> because ours is a convention center and community center. As the NRTs did their work, and we were then developing Monona Terrace, while this was not in one of the NRT neighborhoods, one of the feedbacks we got, and this was long before equity lenses, was it had to be a community facility come on down in July and August onto the roof on a Friday afternoon. It is the most wonderful experience you'll ever have. It is Madison at its best in terms of racial, economic, ethnic diversity. We have to have fire marshals onto the entrance to the roof after 7 o'clock. If you don't get there by 7, you're going to have to wait until somebody else leaves. We went into the neighborhood and started doing evening programs, engaging the kids with, with the NRT members. And you can see the variety of activities that we fo focused on. And then, as we learned, these kids can be very powerful. There was no bus transportation to Owl Creek. The budget for creating bus service out there to this edge neighborhood was $350,000. And here it is. This was not created by city transit, transportation officials. It was created by the high school kids from La Follette High School who got together and said, one school bus a day out of the neighborhood and in doesn't serve us, it doesn't serve our parents, it doesn't serve our working siblings. We have to have transportation service. They went, we provided the resources, the technical expertise, they then did the rest of it, including lobbying the city council, and it passed. NRT neighborhoods started seeing more, in, more investment, whether it was uh, wet, wet place space or dry active place space. Uh, there's a couple of us uh, tearing down the walls inside of a shopping center. You can see in the lower right-hand corner uh, the doubling of both the branch library and the neighborhood center Again, an NRT neighborhood, the impetus coming from the people in the neighborhood. The other element besides placemaking is the social cohesion, creating that affinity among people. And here, I want to point out one of our great failures. This is a listening session. This is bad. <laughs> this is not good. 
These people are all talking to those folks at the table. There's no interchange. And we won't even talk about the gender of, and, the, and the race of most of the people at the table. <laughs> this is the way it's done. This is a member of the city council. These are neighborhood residents, other members of the NRT. This is just one table of about eight that evening. I attended, the county executive attended, and the neighborhood creates. I want to mention this is very dangerous, especially when you do it with young people, <laughs> because they may come up with a very expensive bus route. But it's bigger than the project that they work on because it gives them an opportunity to learn, to retain the knowledge, the information, the skill, and then go on to use it and apply it elsewhere, not just in their lives, but for their neighborhoods and their families. One of the things that Fred Kent, the placemaker, said, quicker, cheaper, lighter. This is one of the greatest things. We ripped it off from Berkeley where they have um, off the grid. We've got all these wonderful food carts in Madison. They make a good living feeding a lot of people on State Street uh, around campus and the, and the state capitol during the day, but they don't do anything at night. We hauled out some park benches. This is an empty lot next to a, a half-filled shopping center. It's an empty lot. And so people from around the neighborhood come in, gather on Thursday nights. It works. We partner. Here we see uh, a partnership with the Latino Academy. On the right, we see uh, a, a partnership with a class involving uh, computer skills and access to job applications. The key point is we serve, we are not in charge. hy V came to town. I can't tell you how spectacular it is looking at the workforce at hy V. Every department, every level of management the colors of the people, the complexity of the work they do, the ages, it works. Want to review again. Structure the teams. They are head, headed by a guidance team. And remember that young 23-year-old officer that we saw at the beginning who wrote the note? He's now the captain of the South Police District. Uh, he was a finalist just this last month for police chief and had a profound impact in asking a question about what am I doing here? What is my role? And he had the audacity to bypass the entire department and send it to the mayor. We need more public employees like that. I think we've got them. And, and on behalf of the city of Madison, I just want to make one more comment. We are a community that is known as 60, 76 square miles surrounded by reality. Now, uh, back, back, back to, the, uh, to the three points, uh, structure, craft, and culture. For the graduate students, when you read that material, whether it's in the old bureaucracy book or it's Lynn Hill, the new textbook on, 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 uh, on administration in the public sector. Just please keep in mind that the real shift here was not the structural one of breaking people out of their normal departments, but it was the cultural shift in understanding their new role in management. Thank you.